Shalom friends, this is Erez, and today we're looking down toward the uh, Jordan Valley. We're now on the Judean mountains, and this is one of the most interesting, most beautiful sites in my eyes here in the land of Israel. And plus so many things have happened here, so it is fascinating. You see, the Jordan Valley is uh, the land between the Sea of Galilee, uh, northern from here, all the way down to the Dead Sea that we see just behind me. The Jordan Valley's uh, size or length is about 105 kilometers, which is 65 uh, miles. Its uh, width at the widest point, not including this part, is about 10 kilometers, about 6.2 miles. And at the narrowest point, it's about 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles. As we come here close to the Dead Sea area, the Jordan Valley between the two mountains to the east, which is Jordan, to here, which is Israel, to the west, is about um, 20 kilometers, about 12 miles. So this is the widest point of the Jordan Valley area. In the Jordan Valley area, we do have the Jordan River flowing from the Sea of Galilee, as I said, northern from here, and eventually pours into the Dead Sea, right over there. Mountains that are steep on both sides, in the Jordanian side and in the side of Israel that are very, very high, about 1,200 uh, meters in height. The Jordan Valley area is uh, part of the big and long uh, Syrian-African Rift Valley, one of the longest, biggest rift valleys in the world, the tectonic breaks, which is about 6,000 kilometers. 3,700 miles in length, in distance. Starts from the Taurus Mountains in T Turkey and heads all the way south to Africa, uh, even beyond uh, Mozambique, Lake Victoria, uh, and it passes through here. The Syrian African Rift Valley it used to be the migrating route for people, for humans in ancient times from Africa. Uh, passing through here to Asia and to, uh, uh, to Europe, also for animals passing through here, but also for birds migrating, migrating route to Africa and from Africa to Europe two times a year, still today. This area here of the Dead Sea, where the Jordan River flows to the Dead Sea, is fascinating. Why exactly? because the Jordan River used to be the passageway for people in ancient times that would walk from north to south, let's say head to Jerusalem. But coming here to the Dead Sea in ancient times, they could not continue southern from here. The Dead Sea in ancient times was higher up, much more water, nothing to compare really. And uh, this would be the dead end, no continuing from here. To continue down south, they would have to climb up the mountains and from the mountains to continue down south or to the west. This also was an amazing junction in ancient times, connecting the King's Highway that uh, led people from south to north, north to south upon the mountains of Jordan today. From there, they could connect to the Via Maris, or the Way of the Sea, the road passing through the land of Israel today. They could connect from east to west, and from here to north, a big junction area, which a big, big city lies just below it, controlling everything, and that would be Jericho, just down below us. Now we chose to film uh, in sunrise because this place uh, becomes very hazy later on. I think you could already see it, especially in the summertime, due to the, um, the dust, the sand around here. But also the Dead Sea being the lowest point on Earth causes evaporation. 
And because of this evaporation, uh, the view is very, very bad. Here we could still see something. We cannot see the Jordan River, you're right. As uh, hard as you try, the Jordan River today is uh, a small river, doesn't really resemble or compare to the mighty river that we read about in text. Um, that is due to a few things that we're going to touch uh, in other teachings. What went on here? Well, so many things that I could think of. First of all, upon the mountains of Jordan over there, just where you see the Dead Sea, high up, that's Mount Nebo. Remember, Moses was not allowed to enter the land. So in Deuteronomy 34, from the beginning, it says that Moses climbed up upon Mount Nebo, which is over there. That's Mount Nebo. Looking toward the land, looking toward the east, the mounts of Gilead, saw the area of Laish and Leshem, Dan. And then from the north, his eyes went into the land toward uh, the west. Looking deeper inside the land, I'm sure he saw uh, Shalem that existed at that time, meaning to be Jerusalem. And then his eyes went to the south seeing the other cities or settlements that existed here. So he saw the land all around from that high mountain right over there. The tribes of Israel, they weren't allowed to enter the land from the south. Remember, after sinning upon Mount Chorev, Mount Sinai, they stayed in the desert for 40 years until that generation was over with. And then the Lord did not want them to fight against the uh, people, the nations inside the land, so he told them, go around from the eastern side, around the Dead Sea. Well, here the Dead Sea ends to the north, and right below us, that's Jericho. So in the Jordan River area in front of us, that's where the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes, the Bible tells us there were 600,000 men, perhaps more than 2 million Israelites crossing through here and eventually uh, settling on uh, the camp called Gilgal upon the Judean mountain. That happened over here. In 2 uh, Kings chapter 2, from the beginning, it talks about uh, Elijah and Elisha. Elijah, knowing that it's time to say goodbye, told uh, Elisha, uh, stay here when they were in Gilgal northern from here upon the mountains. And Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So from Gilgal, they went to Bethel, nearby here as well. And then the same story. And then from there, they went down the mountain all the way to Jericho that we see below us. And then uh, during the whole story, the, the prophets and the sons of the prophets that were all around this area, this would be a place of, of prophets and rabbis studying, gathering. They said, the, the, your Lord is going to leave you. He's going to go. But he said, you know, as the Lord lives and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. So from there, they cut through the Jordan River that was mighty at that time. A miracle had to take place just as the tribes entered from the east to the west. Elisha and Elijah left from the west to the east, crossed through the Jordan River. And just before our eyes, in this area over here, this is where Elijah left on the uh, chariots of fire to the sky. It happened over here. Then his garment fell and Elisha took it and his, he continued his job. Uh, quite amazing. And of course, folks, in the Jordan River area, down below, that's where... John the Baptist baptized people. Why was this spot chosen? I'm guessing that beyond the Jordan River area, in an area called Shittim. Well, Shita is an acacia tree. Shittim in plural, a lot of acacia trees that are trees of the desert. We find them all around, a protect plant it is here. That's where you would have schools. Schools for rabbis and prophets studying the word of God. And what better place to have school than in the desert area where you could connect to the Lord. 
I'm guessing that John, the Baptist, baptized people around here, baptizing rabbis and prophets, knowing the Word of God, knowing how to read and write, but also people heading up to Jerusalem and down from Jerusalem. Because from here, folks, you could only head to the east and to the north in this junction point. And perhaps here, John the Baptist captured them all. And we shouldn't forget Yeshua, Jesus, baptizing there in the Jordan River area. And as he was finished with the baptize, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit led him from there, from the Jordan River to Jericho, passing Jericho, we're guessing, to the mountains here, to the wilderness, where he would be tempted by Satan for 40 days. So here we are, folks, in, a, um, in an area that seems uh, quite empty, perhaps. So many biblical stories took place here. I know now this is one of my favorite places. I'll also add that the Jews throughout history coming from all over Israel, especially from the north, they would come passing the Jordan Valley area, heading to Jericho, and from Jericho climbing up the mountains for 10 hours until they would reach the house of God in Jerusalem. It all happened around here. I hope you enjoyed it, folks. We'll see you next time. Shalom. So I hope you enjoyed the teaching. If you did, then feel free to press the uh, subscribe button. It's right over there in the right bottom corner. It would be much appreciated, of course. You could also press the like button. Comments and questions, if you have any, will be most appreciated as well. I'll see you in the next teaching. Bye for now.